around 5.3 million years ago, a crucial event reshaped the Mediterranean region. It was a colossal flood that refilled the local sea, which had been extremely barren and salty up until that point. It got the name Zanclean Flood, and it forever changed the geography of the area. The Mediterranean Sea is surrounded by Europe, Africa, and Asia, and connects to the ocean by the Strait of Gibraltar. This is quite a narrow passage, measuring about 8 miles. It may not be that wide, but the strait plays a crucial role in maintaining the liquid balance between these two bodies of water. About 6 million years ago, a bunch of things might have caused the Mediterranean to be cut off from the Atlantic Ocean. Some say it was an ice age. Others speak of tectonic movements, like earthquakes. Whatever the cause, it pushed the Mediterranean area into a period called the Mycidian Salinity Crisis. For about 1,000 years, the sea slowly evaporated, leaving behind a dry basin that was several miles below sea level. This crisis really changed the landscape, creating conditions similar to those found in today's Dead Sea. What this means is that the lush Mediterranean beauty used to be a super salty environment containing nearly 10 times more salt than the ocean. Say you could have visited. You would have been able to effortlessly float on the little water you could find, even if you're not a skilled swimmer. The amount of salt and that mineral content would have made it challenging for most creatures to survive. However, some hardy microorganisms, such as bacteria, could have adapted to these harsh conditions. These days, at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea, we can find holes as large as the Grand Canyon, and they seem to have formed during that same period of dehydration. Evidence suggests that massive rivers, such as the Nile and the Rhone, flowed directly into the Mediterranean back then, leaving behind canyons as they reached the bottom, thousands of feet below the sea level. People had to find some sort of explanation back in the day for the drying of the Mediterranean, so they came up with myths and legends. One such tale was told by the people of southern Iberia, in modern-day Spain and Portugal. It was also recounted by a famous Roman writer called Pliny the Elder. What this legend said was that the Mediterranean used to be cut out from the ocean until the hero Hercules, with his mighty sword, carved a path. He did so between a fictional location in modern-day Africa and the Rock of Gibraltar. This allowed the ocean waters to flow in, transforming the Mediterranean into what we know today. Some fossils also seem to confirm the unusually large flood. Remains of marine organisms were found in layers high above current sea levels. This means the areas were once submerged underwater. These fossils belong to mollusks, fish, and marine mammals. Because of modern techniques, we now have at least an estimated timing of the Zanclean flood. Scientists used computer simulations to reconstruct the event providing further evidence that it was real. What they also discovered is that there's a possibility the Mediterranean might change once more. The Strait of Gibraltar could close, most likely because of movements deep under the ground. This could lead to the Mediterranean becoming dry again, over a span of about a thousand years. The Mediterranean area could disappear altogether if the African continent keeps shifting north too, getting closer to Europe. Another one of those famous yet still a bit hypothetical large floods is called the Black Sea Deluge Theory. Some scientists think that around 8,400 years ago, water from the Mediterranean might have spilled over into the Black Sea through a narrow passage called the Bosporus Strait. This could have caused a massive disaster, forcing people living near the Black Sea to pack up their things and move further inside the continent in both Europe and Asia. Along with them, they might have carried stories about this colossal flood. The specialists that came up with this idea also suggested that these migrating people might have brought along new ways of farming. Not everyone from the scientific community is convinced, though. Some argue that while there might have been a flood, it likely happened earlier and was way smaller. They didn't think this flood could have caused, for example, the story of Noah's Ark. In this legend, a spiritual man was warned by a higher entity that a giant flood was on its way. The man went to gather pairs of animals and pack them all in a boat to make sure these species would survive the devastating flood. There was also the concern among scholars that discussing real floods and ancient stories too much might blur the lines between science and fiction. 
There may be other reasons why these flood stories are so often found across different cultures all over our planet. One idea is that floods were incredibly destructive for early farmers, so they invented myths about them signaling the end of the world. Another idea is that people stumbled upon ancient sea creature fossils in unusual places, leading them to believe there was a significant flood in the past. The solution to future floods, though, might be floating cities. As sea levels continue to rise, coastal cities like Amsterdam, New Orleans, and Venice may go under. So, floating infrastructure may be the way to go, with buildings that can rise with the water levels, making them able to resist extreme weather, too. Countries like the Netherlands, which have a history of managing water risks, are pioneering these floating creations. With cities running out of space for expansion, we might be forced to move on water anyway. By moving on the water, we can reduce crowding and create more interesting ways to feed ourselves, like floating gardens. These homes also come with great alternatives to our energy needs through systems that use solar and wind power. Not to mention that these homes might turn out to be cheaper in the long run. One such floating city might pop up soon in the Maldives. Its goal is to host up to 20,000 people and will feature places to live and eat, but also shops and schools. Designed to look like coral, the region will include canals placed between some 5,000 floating pieces of land. The city will be constructed using modular units put together in a construction site nearby. After they're completed, they'll be towed to the floating city. The next step is to secure them to a large underwater concrete hull, which is screwed tightly to the seabed on some steel stilts. All these pieces of construction let the modular units easily move as naturally as the sea. Even for those that are afraid of seasickness, there's a solution. That's what the nearby coral reef is for. It will surround the city, making a natural wave breaker. Human-made coral banks will also be placed underneath the city, which will also help coral grow naturally. The long-term goal is to make the establishment self-sufficient. It will have electricity, mostly from on-site solar power. Waste will be treated nearby and reused as plant fertilizer. Instead of air conditioning, the city will use deep-sea water cooling. This method pumps cold water from the deep sea to cool the area, saving energy. Earth is not the only planet that's seen some serious floods. In ancient times, Mars seems to have experienced them too, and they played an important role in shaping its surface. Recent research reveals that billions of years ago, Mars was heavily affected by some serious river flooding, which contributed to the formation of its valleys and canyons. The reason for these floods was heavy rainfall, which reshaped the Martian landscape in a jiffy, at times even within days or weeks. Unlike Earth, where rivers form pretty slowly, Mars experienced rapid changes because of these floods, particularly around 4 billion years ago. We've known for quite some time that there have been floods on Mars, but this study really showed us their extent. We now know they were more widespread and frequent than previously thought. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.